Welcome back to our series on how to use a ConvertKit automation template to set up a welcome sequence for your email. In this video, we are going to cover link triggers. Now, ConvertKit's template suggests using a link trigger. We are going to talk about why you are less likely to use a link trigger for a welcome sequence than basically any other email sequence that you might be setting up. We'll talk about how to set up a link trigger in ConvertKit um, so that you can start getting people into a sequence with a link trigger. And we will briefly touch on, if you're selling a product, a different way that you might get people into your automation, one that was not proposed in ConvertKit's automation template. So let's get started. So here we are in our evergreen newsletter automation. And what I want to focus on is this element on the top row, the element in the middle where it says newsletter. You can see the icon there looks like a little tag with a plus sign. What that means is anytime someone is added to that tag, they have that tag added to their profile, they will come into this automation. In the intro to this video, I mentioned that you're less likely to use an add to tag way to get people into a welcome sequence automation than any other kind of email sequence automation. So let's talk about why that is. With a welcome sequence, you're typically sending that to brand new people to your list. How do people come into your list? In the last video, we talked about forms. They come in through a form or a landing page. Add to a tag is typically used for a couple different reasons. Number one, you are taking an existing member of your email list and you are adding a tag to them because you've learned some new information. And I'll show you a way to do that. Um, another reason that somebody might get a tag added to them is if they made a purchase. And if they made a purchase, chances are you're using one of ConvertKit's direct integrations to bring those purchases in, let's take a moment to look at your options for a purchase. Here's a list of ConvertKit's integrations, and this list is changing. And so when you go and look at this in the future, your list might look different than what I'm showing you on the screen now. But you'll see a lot of different sales platforms on here. Samcart, Shopify, um, Teachable, Stripe, Gumroad. All of those are ways for people to make purchases. And you can directly connect those platforms with ConvertKit so that when somebody buys your course in Teachable, it automatically notifies ConvertKit, hey, there's been a sale. And when you make those direct uh, connections, instead of using a link trigger, so you could ha set up an automation that says when someone makes a purchase, add a tag to them and then use that tag to get them into your email sequence. Another way though is you can just use that purchase directly. So if you hit the plus sign here and say purchase, anytime somebody makes a purchase and then you go through and you find the product in here and hit add event, that will let you add somebody into your email sequence directly. So if you're selling a product and you want to get people into your welcome sequence, I would recommend instead of using an add to tag, if you are using any one of the products where ConvertKit has a direct integration, go ahead and use that option instead. But maybe you're not. Maybe your sales platform is not listed here. If that's the case, I would recommend using Zapier. Zapier is an amazing tool that lets you connect platforms together that don't have direct integrations. If you have some kind of purchasing program, you can tell Zapier, hey, this person made a purchase, and Zapier then can tell ConvertKit, hey, this person made a purchase. In that case, then you would have Zapier add a tag. So now we're back to this. You can have Zapier add that tag in. That's one way in which you might use the add a tag to start someone into your welcome sequence. The other way that you might use to start someone into your welcome sequence is through clicking on a link in an email. Again, this is something you're more likely to use in any other kind of email sequence than a welcome sequence. Maybe what the sequence is instead is a post-purchase follow-up sequence or something like that. But let's take a look. I have 
an email here. It is not a very good email, but it's just a shell for us to practice on. And this is an email that would get sent out if somebody made a purchase. I'm going to send them this email. And let's say that instead of automatically adding them into my welcome email sequence, I want to give them the choice. There are a lot of countries that have stricter rules on, on such things, or you just want to respect people's inbox and you say, I'm not going to automatically send them emails because they sent because they purchased something from me. I want to give them the opportunity to choose to get those emails. Here is where we would use that add to tag feature. We are going to let people tag themselves to say, I am interested in your newsletter. So I have my email here and I've got this sign up for the newsletter. Now we are going to add in a link. And when people click on that link, ConvertKit is going to automatically add that newsletter tab to them. Here's how we do that. We highlight the text that we want to hyperlink and we click on link here. And you've got to give them some place to go. ConvertKit requires people can't just click on some text, get the tag added, but sort of not go anywhere. You need to send them to a URL. Now, what should that URL look like? Okay, so I'm telling people they're signing up for my newsletter. The easiest option is to use ConvertKit's sort of canned URL. They have set up a page. If you don't want to set up your own separate page, you can use theirs. And it's this URL, app.convertkit.com slash preferences dash confirmed. So you could use this URL and all this page says is thank you. We've updated your profile. You can take that link and put that URL in here. And then what you're going to do is click on tag, tag subscribers who click this link, and then you choose your tag. And in this case, my tag is newsletter and I'll click add link. That is sort of the lowest lift way to achieve this. Now, let me show you a couple other options for that link. If you don't want to use this convert kit link, um, if you want to do something a little bit more special, this sort of next level of, of sort of effort required is to just set up your own version of that convert kit link. So here is one that we have used for SPI media. It just says essentially like, Thanks for helping us. Um, you're helping me help you by telling me your preferences. You're letting me send you better email. That's kind of the easiest. What's nice about this page is then you can use it over and over and over and you don't have to sort of make a new landing page for each time you want to do a link trigger. OK, so that's sort of the next level of lift. Higher level of lift is a page like this. Now, this is a page that has been customized specifically for the purpose of somebody clicking on a link. In this instance, it's for somebody who downloaded our mindset hacks cheat sheet. And when they click on that link in an email, they will land on this page. And this page, um, it has timed out, but usually you see a five minute countdown timer. That's just to help people be patient until the PDF, until that email triggers out to them. Um, but this has a bunch more information that's really specific to um, that specific link that they're clicking on. That's a higher, a much higher level of lift because now I've created a completely separate page for that link trigger. Whatever you choose to use, I would say if you're just getting started, just use ConvertKit's link out of the box. You can go back and update it later. Um, but, you know, a good practice would be set up a page on your website that sort of points people to where you want them to go. You know, it can say like, thanks for clicking that. I'm going to add you to my weekly newsletter. And here's a page on my, you know, here's a blog post I think you'll like. OK, so somebody gets this email. Let's take a quick let's preview this email. So somebody gets this email. Here's our little preview and they're reading it and they say, oh, I would like to sign up for that newsletter. I'm going to click on this link, click on the link and you can see um, the the page that you've specified will open up. And when they do that, ConvertKit is going to add that newsletter tag into there because um, as we saw, we have in here tag subscribers who click on this link for newsletter. And when that happens, they end up in our automation. They end up in here and they go into our welcome sequence or whatever email sequence you want them to land in. I'm going to show you one more thing that is useful to you. So ConvertKit, 
we used their template and ConvertKit chose the name of that tag as newsletter. What if I want to change that? How do I do that? I can't change it from here, from this automation screen. I need to go to subscribers and I can edit it from my list of tags here. I'm going to click on newsletter and up here next to the tag name, you can click edit. Here is where I can change the name. So I am going to change this to Anytime I'm using a tag primarily as a trigger to make something happen, so in this case, it's what I call a link trigger. Uh, they click on the link and it triggers something to happen. I like to put the name trigger in front so that I remember that other things are happening with that tag. That way, if you know, a year down the line, I'm going through and I'm like, I'm gonna clean up my sort of email organization. I'm gonna clean out all the old tags. I remember then that that tag is doing other things so that I don't accidentally get rid of it. Okay, I just click save here. And this is one thing that I really love about ConvertKit. ConvertKit has done a very good job with sort of their database structure. You can rename things and it doesn't break any of your automations. Let's go back to automations. We'll click on this. And now when this loads, you can see that the name of my trigger has changed. And let's go back to that email. And if I go and edit this link, you will see that the name of my tag has changed. ConvertKit does that really well, a lot better than um, some other platforms that I've used. So that's what you need to know here about using a link trigger or sorry, add to tag to get people into your welcome sequence. In the last video, I'm going to cover using ConvertKit's landing page builder and how those are different from forms and how you can use that to get started even when you're really new to your business and maybe don't even have a website yet. If you are completely brand new to email marketing and not sure how to get people onto your email list, try our three-day challenge. Our CEO, Pat Flynn, will walk you through the process of going from no one on your email list to getting your first 100 subscribers. We'll send you three emails, one per day, and each one of those emails has a challenge to help you break out of your comfort zone and get people to sign up for your email list. The link is below. To get the other videos in this series, just click the link below.